Hold on. All right. Hello, everyone, to my uh, supporters who are here and also to those who are watching afterwards and to those who are just interested in um, what I'm doing this year and what I've been doing last year. Um, so this is a bit of a sort of a, uh, an overview of how last year went and um, a report of the things that I'm doing this year, looking forward to doing in the future. Um, I do a quarterly report uh, four times a year, so every, you know, sort of three months worth. And um, this is the la uh, November to January one, so I'll, I'll give a little focus of what I've been doing. But yes, I thought I'd start by sharing um, where what I was doing this time last year, back in 2022. Um, this time last year is when I went part-time at my work, where I went I've been working full time for many, many years, um, about 15 years, and I decided uh, God really wanted me to do uh, go part time and do more ministry, dedicate time to it. So um, I stepped out in faith and did that. Um, and I started uh, a Patreon account and so uh, invited people to sort of join me in my ministry and support me and encourage me in that. Um, so I started that. And I also found out that my wife, Kat, was pregnant. So all these big things were happening this time last year. Um, and uh, so this year was going, uh, you know, 2022 was going to be uh, an exciting, experimental, scary year. Um, and especially uh, if you don't know, um, my wife and I have been trying and hoping and praying and seeking um, help to have a second child for seven years um, and we'd sort of not given up hope but we'd accepted that maybe we were just going to have our one beautiful daughter Dorothy um, and so at the beginning of 2022 it was a great surprise and joy to um, discover that Kat was pregnant um, and uh, so yes so we're in a year's time what's happened um, a summary of those things, we're an update on all of them. Um, I'm continuing to go part-time this year. I found that it was a really wonderful thing to, to have dedicated days in my week for ministry. Um, it helped me to focus. It helped me to um, plan. Uh, it helped me to sometimes put things off to that day, to which was good for work, life, and family balance. Um and my hope uh, and prayer um, is that by the end of this year, I'm able to take another day off. So I would love, um, possibly not this year because we've got a, a child and Kat's working, you know, only going back to work in March for uh, like half a day. So um, the income won't be as much this year. But so we're thinking maybe next year, I might be able to, in 2024, Lord willing, uh, take another day off to do ministry. So we'll see how it goes. Um, uh, now, I started my Patreon a year ago. Now I've got nine patrons um, from all over the place. Um, and that's really uh, been really, really encouraging and wonderful to have them. Um, and uh, we, my wife gave birth to... Our son, Peter, Peter Samuel Camilleri, um, and he is now just over four months old. So that's where we're at uh, a year on. Uh, I thought I'd give the highlights from 2022, um, what I was doing generally over the year. Um, at the uh, start of the year, for those who don't know, I did, I, I worked really hard in 2020, 2021, on a resource, a discussion resource called Sitting with Job that um, basically was a Bible study. Here we go. That's what it is. Sitting with Job is, um, yeah, goes through the whole book of Job along with some videos which we performed the book of Job um, during the pandemic. Um, and so I made this resource so that churches and Bible studies can study the book of Job using those videos. Um, so at the, at the beginning of last year, that was when I sort of um, 
I'd already worked on it with my Bible study. So I refined it, finished it, and then went to the world. Here you go, use it. Um, and over l last year, it's been wonderful to see um, Bible studies use it and uh, a couple of churches use it for their whole church. And um, yeah, that's really exciting. And I've got some more people who've recently contacted me using it. Um, and so, yeah, that's great to feel like because it took months to put that resource together. I'm very um, happy with it. So it's great to see it being used. Uh, another big highlight from last year was signing contracts with my publisher in the UK, 10 of those, um, for two more books. Finally, after it's been five years since when Samuel and the Gospel was um, written. So now I've got two more books finally coming. Um, one is called uh, Wow God, Thank You, Sorry, Please, A Kid's Guide to Prayer. And um, this is not what the cover will look like, but it's a, a prototype. Uh, and I've got a sequel to this, um, which is called Read, Think, Pray to um, A Kid's Guide to Reading the Bible. Um, and so that that's really exciting to have my publisher go, yes, we want to publish these books. They're going to be great books for kids and um, to teach them about prayer and reading the Bible. And so to actually get those contracts signed, which means, um, you know, Lord willing, it's going to happen, you know. Um, and so that was really fun. Um, the next big thing which took up the biggest chunk of last year was I decided to learn um, John chapters 17 to 24 chapters from near the end of the Gospel of John, commit it to memory and perform it for Easter. I called it Easter According to John, uh, and I found three churches that booked me on um, the Easter weekend to perform that for them. And that was just delightful. That was a huge effort to learn. It took me a couple of months to um, prepare for it. And then it was wonderful to perform. And it was so good that I went, you know, this show, this these chapters just um, work as a show, um, as a presentation. And it doesn't need to be an Easter thing. This is just a great gospel presentation. And so I changed the title from Easter According to John to um, that you may believe, which is the line near the end of uh, in, in chapter 20, where he says, these things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ. Um, and so I changed, you know, I made that as the new title, the, that you may believe and market it as a show that churches could book me for. Um, and I not only went around Victoria, um, uh, but I also flew up to Sydney um, three times, I think, um, and did performances up there for churches. In the end, I did nine extra performances, so 11 altogether. No, is that right? That's not math mathematically correct. I did 11. So three minus 11 minus three is eight. That's, that's all right. There we go. I'm, I'm an I'm a arts major, not science, mathematics person. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so... Uh, yes, yeah, so I did eight other performances and um, some in a one in a school, one for a little charismatic Catholic group, um, one for a big church, you know, a whole range of churches and um, all different denominations. And it was just uh, really wonderful. And you can watch. Um, I've got one performance, the whole performance that you can watch from a church in in Sydney um, and. Uh, yeah, you can watch that on YouTube, on my YouTube channel. Um, and I also, um, near the end of the performance, uh, I knew I wanted to capture it and I wasn't sure if I was going to continue the show this year. Um, and so I got in touch with a friend of mine who's a Christian and a director. Uh, his name is Ben Wimpy and he is um, has a film um he has a film studio basically down here in Melbourne and um, and we got together on a day and he set up the cameras in, in his studio with lights and uh, recorded me and I performed the entire show. Um, and I've got the footage of that. And what I did was I took just the first chapter and I've put that on, um, on YouTube so you can watch that. 
Um, but I I haven't put the rest, the whole thing together. But that was a great thing to record last year. Um, then the next big thing that happened once that show sort of wrapped up uh, was um, that I was asked to train the Bible readers for the Gospel Coalition National Conference. Um, and I was also asked to read uh, the book of Titus. They were, they were studying the book of Titus. And so the first session, I read the whole book of Titus. Um, and I also trained the other Bible readers for the other sessions as they read through Titus again. Um, and that was that was an incredible privilege. Um, I love excellent Bible reading. I love training people in Bible reading. Um, and uh, it was just a it was just something that sparked a new flame for the next, I think, chapter of my ministry. Um, because yeah, it was just great to get back to doing it. It was a great opportunity to to do it in that context and um and to re-look at my training for Bible reading. Um and so after that, I had such great conversations with people also at the conference about excellent Bible reading and training for Bible reading. Um and after that, I uh, I'm also on the books as a as one of the authors for the the Gospel Coalition Australia, so I write articles now and then, um, but I hadn't written an article for a while, and so I so they asked me if I could write an article about uh, good Bible reading, and so I wrote an article on the ministry of Bible reading, and it was really a call. So you can look on the Gospel Coalition Australia website and find my article. Um, and instead of it just being hot tips for how to do good Bible reading, it was more a call for us to care about Bible reading in our churches and, uh, it, you know, lift our eyes to what uh, to treating this ministry as a proper ministry that we should prepare, help people prepare for and train them in and uh, things like that. Um, and the Gospel Coalition America, which is obviously 100,000 times bigger than the Gospel Coalition Australia, so the big one, they also shared the article uh, in their circles. So it got it got a really good wide viewing and people responded really well to the article. Um, and I'd always wanted to, um, uh, at some point, use the training material that I'd sort of worked on over the years and sort of make it into something proper um, and something that churches could use. And so I thought, oh, this article might be a good opportunity. So at the bottom of the article I had, if you're interested, I'm I'm working on some training resources. Uh, if you're interested, please sign up here. And I very quickly bought the domain name publicbiblereading.com, uh, which existed. No one else had gotten it yet. So I bought that and I made that link just goes to, went to a Google form um, for churches. They could put in what they were interested in and whether they were interested um, and because it had such a wide uh, viewing, um, I had a few people sign up. So I had, um, we had 56 churches uh, sign up um, the interest form, fill it in uh, from Australia, uh, heaps of places in the US, England, Singapore. And, um, and so you've got all these people that are now waiting for this resource. Uh, so that's really created a great um fire in my belly and a real enthusiasm for me to finish that resource and um and work on that uh for churches so um so yeah so that was the real the big highlights from from last year um in the last three months just to do a official quarterly report um the big things that have happened and what i've been working on uh, the biggest thing that's happened in my life is my son peter was born um, and that, if you have children, know that that's uh, an exhausting, uh, wonderful thing to have a newborn. Um, and so that sapped a lot. We tried to clear the decks a little bit in terms of what um, what we were doing. Um, although I think the the Gospel Coalition um, training, the conference, and me writing that article all happened uh, since uh, Peter was born. Um, so it's been busy. Uh, but yes, um, as well as that article for the Gospel Coalition, that got me sort of enthused for writing 
Gospel Coalition articles. So I wrote two more in the lead up to Christmas. I wrote one about how to respond to Santa and about how to uh, make Christ the center of your Christmas. Um, and that's that's really good because the Gospel Coalition is wonderful. And I've got, they basically, they want me to write more articles. Um, it just takes headspace and time. Uh, and I want to write really good articles. So, um, you know, if I had two days, I might try to pump out an article every fortnight or something like that, or once a month. And, um, and so we'll, we'll see how many we can do. Um, but sometimes I'm just on a roll and got ideas and I want to write. And um, so that's nice to be able to have done that. Um, uh, my church, uh, I direct the, um, the carols event at my church every year are called Bundy Carols. And this year um, I did that in the midst of having a newborn. And um, the theme this year was on O Christmas Tree. So I did all this research in the history of the Christmas tree and made these videos teaching the, the, uh, the history of the Christmas tree and how there's a real Christian history to it. Um, and those videos got made so that they could be shown at the carols event but they also then I could post them online so that people could just share them and enjoy them and learn from them as well. Uh, so that was great. Um, and I wrote a song um, for, for carols and performed a magic trick and uh, prepared the event as well. So, so that took a, a bit of energy, but that's a wonderful gospel opportunity at my church. Um, and uh, then Oh, that's that's right there yeah, then in also in the last three months um I finished the final draft of my next book so wow God thank you sorry please uh my publisher said okay send in the final final draft um and so I refined it a little bit and sent it to them um so that's been exciting and they've uh they've the ball started rolling in terms of um that they've gotten back to me with some, you know, suggestions and edits, and we're talking about the illustrator and what, so how we're going to find an illustrator and what sort of illustrations we want to use, and so that's happening this year as well. Um, and then the last thing I've done in the last three months is something I've done sort of in the last uh, couple of weeks, and then today, um, and that was um, my son Peter is getting baptized on. Sunday. Um, and over the years, I've thought lots about uh, baptism and um, where I stand on infant baptism. And you might be watching and you vehemently disagree with infant baptism, um, or you agree with it, and or you haven't decided what your position is on it. Um, so I really respect all the, the different sides on it. And so I wanted to have a discussion with someone who had a different conclusion to me. Um, but who both shared my love for the gospel and uh, my convictions and we could have a healthy dialogue about it. So I've been sort of preparing for that and did that today uh, with a friend of mine from the States, Eric, a guy who I only know on Facebook, but now we finally met, saw face to face. And we had a three hour conversation today. Um, so I'm lucky I've still got any voice. Um, three hour conversation over Zoom and discussing baptism and our different our different positions on it, our thoughts about what is baptism and um, the history of it and what the Bible says and all those sort of, and how do you raise your kids in the gospel? Um, so that was wonderful, and that is going to be um, posted uh, um, very soon. And I'm going to give an early post for my patrons, so I'm going to share that just with them so that they can they can see it a bit early. See, there's some benefits. If you're a patron, I've got to make some. So usually the way Patreon works is there's a content creator and then he has all these exclusive things that you, only if you're a patron, you you get. Um, but that doesn't really work for what I'm doing because people are usually giving me, you know, giving me their hard earned money, not so that they can get some secret resource so that I can give away the resources and do more of them and, and that sort of thing. So I've got very kind, generous um, patrons. So I try to give them a little behind the scenes stuff of what I do 
um, to make it, uh, you know, make them know that they're very special to me. Um, so, so yeah, but sorry, I can't do more for my patrons. Um, uh, but yes, so that's, um, uh, that's what I've been working on in the last three months. So it's been a busy three months with a newborn. Um, but yeah, it's just, I just keep wanting to create and, um, be a useful part of the body um using the gifts that god's given me and the opportunities god's given me um to encourage the church and build it up and provide things that people can use and can encourage conversations and get people into the word and that sort of stuff so um cool so now coming up in 2023 very very exciting uh this is what's happening this year hopefully lord willing um with your prayers and support uh first thing is um as i said wow god thank you sorry please that book um the ball is rolling for that so we're going to be finding an illustrator i'll be hopefully working with them and creating this book and that'll be worked over this year and uh lord willing it will be published and ready and available um maybe by the end of this year or early next year it's all this long process um but but that's really exciting um and by the end of over this year as well i want to finish writing the next book which i haven't finished writing so the um read think pray do a kid's guide to reading the bible so i will need to finish that one uh, and give them the manuscript by the end of the year so that's my that's that big goal for this year um definitely if you are a patron i will i can't share i probably won't be able to share sort of illustrations and how the book's going and that sort of stuff uh publicly but i'll share with my patron so you'll get a little sneak peek on how that's all developing um and i actually want i've i've got the domain name kidsguidebooks.com and i want to put all these books into into this and have a series of books so we've got a kid's guide to prayer, a kid's guide to reading the Bible. Um, I'm interested in writing uh, Who Are You? A Kid's Guide to Identity. So teaching kids about them and we're all made in the image of God and what that means. Um, and you know, I'm even interested, a bit more wacky ideas is Kid's Guide to Wisdom, doing a kid's version of Proverbs, Ecclesiastes and Job somehow um but yeah i think there could be a whole series of a kid's guide books um uh which which would be f fun and we'll see if if that kicks off um but at least i've got these two that i'm under contract to write so that's great um then the next the big thrust the thing that's really uh i'm excited about this year is the ministry of bible reading um i've i'm obligated because i've got all these churches that are uh, asking me for it to finish the um the bible training resource and this is that's what i'm working on there's me reading the bible at the gospel coalition conference um and this is sort of what the cover might look like the ministry of bible reading public bible reading reading god's word with clarity comprehension and conviction a practical resource for church bible reading training by simon camilleri so um I want to finish that. I want it, I want it to be really useful and practical, um, uh, a resource that churches can use as a workshop, or that they give it to their their Bible readers to to work through. Um, uh, so that's really exciting. I'd like to work on a workshop so that churches that would want me to come personally, um, and so yeah, I might be doing a little bit of traveling around, running these workshops for churches. Um, but uh, and then the the bigger goal is I'd like to do some video training workshops on Bible reading. Um, I the real it's a it's really it's almost like keeping me up at night that I'm I'm so in, excited by this idea is that I'd really love for um, publicbiblereading.com to be just a hub where people churches any church around the world could just go oh how do we we've got bible readers what training oh 
and they can they go will go publicbarbelreading.com and um and this website will have uh you know the resources that they can use video training maybe maybe it will be a, something that i i actually do charge for depending on how much money i need to sink into it to make it done done really well um but it's yeah just really exciting me every church generally has bible readers um if they're a good church uh they've got bible readers every church needs the bible readers to be able to do it well um and if this isn't like a really expensive course if it or if there's just like maybe the the printed materials super cheap and the video resources are a bit more expensive or something like that but i i really want any church a little country church with six grandmas you know them to be able to use these resources a big mega church with you know 20,000 people um them to be able to put their all their bible readers through this training material so um it's a little bit daunting but it, it almost feels like this is what my life all the skills and things that i've been building on over the years that i've got a few of the skills to be able to make um make this happen um uh feels like it's a really yeah it's just really exciting me the idea of being able to for that to exist it feels like that would be a great thing to exist this um these resources uh and there's not too many um like there's some books here and there and matthias media has a a training resource on reading the bible um but yeah i'd like to I'd like to produce my own and um, uh, and make that happen. So I think that's going to be my focus this year. Um, and one of the other things I'd like to do um, as sort of an experiment is run a retreat. Um, so that might be my one event the year in this year, um, uh, like a Bible reading retreat um, called Two Letters to Theophilus. And the idea, whether it'll work or whether I need to break it up, the idea is that you, you, we go away to a lovely setting and there's really good Bible readers who are trained and prepared for this event, who I might pay to prepare, like find some Bible readers that I know who are really good um, and and have a thing. So people come and uh, in, a, in a lovely relaxing setting, like a retreat setting, and they hear the gospel of Luke and the book of Acts read over the retreat. So the two letters to Theophilus. Um, the, uh, and I just think that would be what an amazing thing that would be to spend, put time aside to go away to a beautiful setting, having really good Bible readers read to you a huge, um, you know, couple of two big books of the Bible um, over that time. And uh and you'd and there'd be food at it. It wouldn't be an overnight thing. It'd probably just be a one day retreat. Um, but yeah, so I'm that's what I'm contemplating. So, and I'd like to get a team to together to make that happen. Um, so if that's something that you are um, think you've got some skills to make happen, um, running an event like that or being part of an event like that, um, please yeah be in contact because yeah I want to get a team and I you know see if it's possible to happen i think it'll be really exciting even whether we did two one for luke and one for acts at two different times if we thought it was too much to do both books um but yeah so that's uh that's some of the exciting things i want to do with bible reading um and the ministry of public bible reading um uh so yeah so that's not all i want to do this year um, the other thing I want to do is finish editing that you may believe. Remember, I recorded it in a studio, but I've only really edited chapter 17, but I've got that footage. Um, so I'm thinking of trying to find someone who could edit that for me and maybe paying them to edit it for me um, just to free me up. Uh, but um, yeah, I'll just see what my resources are, whether it's best for me to do it or or someone else. Um and uh, yeah, to get that finished and hopefully finished by Easter, ideally, so that if people want to watch it over Easter or show it at their church, they can and, you know, put it out there for everyone to see for free. Um, so I want to do that this year. 
I want to continue writing for the Gospel Coalition Australia as uh, ideas for articles um, pop up and opportunities for that. Um, and the last thing is that I want to do is, as you can tell, I've got lots of strings to my bow, working on lots of different things in lots of different directions. And so I want to consolidate all my ministry things. Uh, and my first, my I've got a publishing name called Simon Says Publishing, um, and that's what I published when Santa learned the gospel under that name. Um, and I've got when uh, Simon Says Publishing.com. And so I want to work, make that website happen and be a sort of a hub. So there's a lot of people who know that I did did one thing but not the other. Uh, they uh, People haven't heard about the Job resource and they didn't know I did this performance of That You May Believe and uh, they didn't see the Hamilton parody song or, you know, those sort of things. So I'd love to, uh, you know, and I even make, you know, and print T-shirts and things like this. So... I want to sort of put everything under the one, um, at least all those websites, one place where you can just find out about them all. Um, so consolidating Simon says publishing.com to have all my resources, not, they wouldn't all be on there necessarily, but it'd be this one place where you can just see everything that I'm doing and um, go, go to all the different places. Um, if you're interested in whatever you are. So resources, videos, courses, the books that I'm working on, T-shirts and yeah, all that sort of um, fun stuff. So, so yeah, so that's 2023. Um, so hopefully, if you are supporting me, you feel like I'm putting your your um, support, your money to good use. Uh, I definitely feel an obligation to you guys to do that, to not waste my Wednesdays, um, and that's a really good part of it uh, of having patrons is it's a real encouragement to me to use my time well um which is great um and so I, I really want to thank those that have been supporting me over the last year um and yeah i know it, it's uh it's hard to know who to support and different things like that so for you to think that i'm worthy of some of your um you know the money that you've earned through your work um i'm I'm very humbled by that. And um, uh, yeah, thank you very much for it. And if you're watching this video and you um, would like to support me or you can support me, um, or you want to join that sort of community of people who are supporting me, uh, please do. It's to be a patron, um, you only need to give technically a, a minimum of a dollar a month if you want to. So if you've got a spare $12 a year, uh, that you don't mind throwing my way, then join the community and find out what I'm doing. It will give you opportunities to pray for me um, and find out, um, yeah, what's going on. Um, but if you've got, you know, if you've got some, uh, if God's blessed you with some resources to be able to um, uh, bless me with so that I can continue doing this and hopefully do more um, as the years go on, uh, then please uh, go to, uh, patreon.com forward slash Simon Camilleri and and check it out and decide um but yeah that's a that's a summary of my last year and this year so thank you very much for for watching um and um yeah I look forward to the next quarterly report to tell you how it's all going cool all right thanks <laughs>